La Haine is a Mathieu Casavet's drama movie released in France in 1995. The film narrates a very key day in the lives of three young men who grew up and lived in the suburbs of Paris. These are called Vince, Hubert and Said. Through their lives, the audience lives the topic of police violence and hate, as well as the power oligarchy established in France during the 90s, where police got away with anything and everything they did. Each of these three characters represent a different personality trait. While Vince represents hate, Hubert represents reason, and Said, innocence. The story that took place over those 24 hours began with the police taking a beating on a 16-year-old kid called Abdeli Shah, leaving the kid seriously injured and in a coma. This tragic event caused the youth in the suburbs to rebel against the police force and commit a serious amount of crimes of public destruction and aggression, such as destroying the police station or burning down Hubert's boxing establishment. In the altercates, one of the police officers loses his gun, which ends up in Vince's hands. The gun is a key element throughout the movie, given the fact that it causes a lot of conflict between our three main characters, and it leads us to the tragic ending of the story. The director, Matthew Kasevitz, was inspired by a real event that occurred on April 6, 1993, when 17-year-old Macomba Wall was shot dead by the police while cuffed in a Paris police station. Kasevitz found taking the story to the small screen necessary to uncover the life outside the glamorous city center of Paris. The life in the suburbs, where people lived under precarious situations and lacked the economic power to get out of them. In 2004, film programmer and critic James Quant was the first to coin the term New French Extremity to describe what he saw as a growing vogue for shock tactics in French cinema since the 1990s. The new extremism gained widespread notoriety as one of the most important recent trends in French cinema. This new filmmaking was done by some well-known directors like Michael Haneke or Lars Vaughn. The directors of this type of cinema show in an extreme way the reality and the graphic representations of sexuality, brutal intimacy, violence, male and female rape, sadomasochism, cannibalism, gang rape and incest, apparently designed with the main objective of impacting and provoking the spectator. The main theme in La Haine is violence. This violence takes on the main part of the filmic narration and visuality for a radical criticism of contemporary advanced industrial societies. The protagonists don't fit in. They are outcasts who can't think before acting and they're full of anger. For them, being civilized is not an option. They act with pure animal instinct. The anecdote of a man falling into the void and thinking that, for the moment, everything is fine, is the image with which Matteo Casavitz seeks to describe the state of tension in which the three main characters live. Now, on to the three main characters. The story is told by its three protagonists, with opposing personalities who counterbalance each other. Three teenagers who laugh at their past, challenge their presence and play with their future. It's 24 hours of these three young men's lives. In that time, there is revenge, oppression, resentment, weapons and drugs, friendship and love, and above all, hate. In order to understand a little bit of everything that these three subjects can do in such a short period of time, we have to understand each of them individually. Out of this trio, Vince is the most violent. A lower middle class French Jew, probably an immigrant or the son of one, about 25 years old. He thinks he's important because he carries a pipe. He admires those who have gone to jail and believes the solution to his hate is to kill an officer. Even more when one of his friends is taken to the hospital where he dies soon after. His inner voice wants revenge and his spirit is poisoned by hate. Revenge spreads like a cancer that clouds his judgment. He confronts his friends several times as he wants to take the law into his own hands. A policeman's gun has fallen into the hands of Vince who spends the day trying to decide against whom he will use it as a way of throwing up all his pent up violence, not realizing that killing a policeman with his own gun would be just another dead end, a further frustration when he realizes that nothing has been solved by that death, that his life is still just as precarious, that Le Muguet is still a marginal suburb. Hubert is the oldest. He owns a gym, is a boxer and supports his mother and two younger siblings. The destruction of his gym shows that the economic condition of her three characters is practically the same. None of them has a decent job. 
He likes boxing and sports, but he denies violence and doesn't see those who go to jail as heroes, but as people who have chosen the wrong path. He knows that the only way to fix his unhappiness is to move somewhere new where nobody knows him, leave the neighborhood and open up new horizons. He tries to stop Vince from committing the crime. In the middle is Said, who has an interim aptitude. He is also violent but less than Vince. He is the youngest and more immature one and he is also an immigrant, an Arab to be precise, but without any presence of a strong religious belief in Islam. He is a hyperactive kid that's wavering everyone and who has no regard for anything or anyone. He's smart, but life has never smiled on him. He mistrusts everyone and makes fun of everybody. He always tries to ease the tension between Hubert and Vince, but he never succeeds. Paris has always been seen as an iconic fashion capital. Glamour and economic power were always represented as main characters in Parisian films. But Lehane is different. In the film, Paris is seen as a city drained of its hope, showing not the elite aspect of the city itself, but the suburbs. Black and white color palette is used to reinforce the gloomy aspect of the film, taking away any vivid colors that could appear, and aims to give the whole picture a very shadowy aspect. The purpose is to take all those who had never stepped on the suburbs to realize what it really is like to live in them. Camilla Pannert said, Take a walk around the suburbs and become conscious of our life conditions before the suburbs come to you, in her article, Fragments of France, When the Suburbs Come to You. The movie was filmed to take us on a journey through the hidden Paris, the one nobody really wants to acknowledge due to its lack of romantic appeal. But whether it's liked or not, it's very much real. It's real when people rebel against police forces and governments. It's real when people burn cars and carry out aggressive manifestations. It's real when people are afraid of their neighbors, illegal possession of drugs, guns, gang wars. All of these situations are very much real and making lives better and easier for these people is something we should, at the very least, try to fight for. Because Paris, just like any other city in the world, has two facades, the classy, charming one and the one that's disregarded and rejected. La Haine is developed in one of the several banlieues of Paris, which are populated by people of different ethnic groups. This suburb is characterized for its humble houses, dirt and disorder, and especially its isolation in relation to the rest of the city. Poverty is really well reflected with the characters' homes and also with the public transport, when people are asking for money in order to feed themselves. Drugs, arms and fights are what surround the environment of the suburbs, which is almost deserted. Lonely parks, street full of drug dealers and empty parkings. It seems they have been abandoned by the rest of the people. There is no social assistance, no employment supplies, and for this reason, there is no social insertion. Throughout the film, the neighborhood is presented as a place full of conflict and protest against the system. These protests are represented by graffitis that become the continuous symbol of violence and anger of the film. Some of them are L'Avenir C'est Nous, The Future Is Us, or even posters as one which appeared at least twice on the film saying Le monde est à vous, the world is yours. The three protagonists are treated as criminals, and that is why most of the times they act as if they were. They are angry, they are sick of the functioning of society, and this can be seen on the bathroom scene, when Vince expresses his displeasure with it. However, at the end, they show to the viewer that they are not what society thinks they are. This is reflected when Vince is pointing at the skinhead and finally he's not able to shoot him. The figure of the woman is seen as an object and boys treat them as the lower sex. This is seen when the three of them are in a party of rich people and they try to flirt with two women who are there, in a really rude way. The situation of the suburb related to the city of Paris is devastating and this is shown when the Eiffel Tower turns off as a metaphor of the city abandoning them in their precarious situation. As the film goes by, we notice that the police are no longer considered a figure of protection but a threat. Police treats them with racism, for instance when they arrest Hubert and Said and talk about their origins with disdain, with the intention of making them feel inferior and afraid. The only way for them to get justice is retaliating, using the violence the police officers have always used against them. The angriest is Vince, who thinks that he must kill a policeman in order to avenge Abdel. On the other hand, Hubert thinks that hate is never beaten by hate. 
At the end of the film, a police officer kills Vince unintentionally. Hubert narrates once more. C'est l'histoire d'une société qui tombe et qui au fur et à mesure de sa chute se répète sans cesse pour se rassurer. Jusqu'ici tout va bien. Jusqu'ici tout va bien. Jusqu'ici tout va bien. L'important c'est pas la chute. C'est l'atterrissage. <tousse>